Oh my gosh, I can already feel the burn. Hi, I'm Scout Forsyth. I'm a professional ballerina with American Ballet Theater and I'm gonna be showing you everything in my dance bag. So you probably think that dancers are just like, oh, you throw on your point shoes and go into rehearsal, but it's so not the case. I wear a lot of hats within the ballet company, so we have to have everything with us and just be prepared for whatever rehearsal comes next because if I don't have all of my like essential items with me, I'm not dancing. Today I'm gonna break it down into categories and make it a little bit smoother. Point shoes, beauty, muscle recovery, stretching, clothing, food and drink, and then a bunch of random stuff. Flat shoes are what we start off with in the beginning of the day. It's kind of like the way to help warm your feet up. Most of the time, I probably have them on for 45 minutes a day, if that. I wear them for class and then in center, I change to point shoes. I go through flat shoes like, I usually have one for like a couple months until they blow out. You're spinning in them, jumping in them. The stitching will start to come undone and you'll just have like holes in your flat shoes. And then I've got my point shoes. I always have about three pairs of point shoes. And the thing is with my shoes and the amount that I'm dancing, they only last me about three, maybe four days if I'm lucky, but standard is three and I just keep rotating them to just try to get an extra day maybe out of them. I am dancing in my point shoes for seven hours a day and all of that dancing and sweating contributes to them breaking down. When you allow them time in between wears to dry out, sometimes they harden up a little bit and you can get that extra like hour out of their life. So it's good to always have like a couple pairs. Sometimes I'll have like four in here. In addition to all my point shoes, I have my point shoe kit. I've got my floss. This is what I sew my point shoes with because thread is made out of cotton and it can break easily and floss is way sturdier, it's cheaper. I have my lighter and that's for burning the edges of the elastic and the ribbon and that's because like I don't want it to be fraying. I have a knife, I use that to cut my point shoes and sew them and then also do a little etching on the bottom of my point shoes and that helps with like its stickiness and makes them less slippery. I'm constantly sewing point shoes. All the dancers, we all joke about that that's our second job with ABT. I'm sewing them any opportunity I could get, any little break I have, any second cast going in. Cause like I said, I'm going through point shoes every three days. So I'm constantly rotating them and sewing brand new ones. And that's just part of the job. Next up is just equally as important as the outside of the shoe is what goes on the inside of the shoe. This is my little toe spacer and toe pad bag. It's honestly not the best smelling thing in my bag. I've just got probably about eight pairs of toe pads in here and some toe spacers. Toe pads are extremely, extremely important. If I lose a toe pad, like say I drop it on my way to rehearsal, I need to have a backup. If I'm not wearing a toe pad in my shoes, even though it's thin, I can feel the difference in the wiggle room and that wiggle room causes blisters, it could cause corns, it could cause like bruised toenails, which is all the things I don't wanna have because I wanna continue dancing and not be worrying about how my feet are hurting. And then underneath those toe pads are my toe spacers. This little guy goes in between my big toe and that's to help with bunion prevention and it just creates like a really nice space in there so my big toe isn't rubbing the toe next to it and kind of creating friction and potentially a blister in between. And then this little one, super, super thin and cute, kind of looks like a little spaceship or fish or something, but that goes in between my pinky toe and then the one directly next to my pinky toe. And that is because unfortunately I have a corn, which is where the two bones kind of rub together right there and they form this like almost blistery callus, but instead of growing outwards, it grows inwards and it's just, it's really painful and not fun. So this little guy is just like a preventative and when I've got it in there, I don't even think about it. So next up, we're moving to all the beauty stuff. Part of being a ballerina is having your hair in a bun. It helps with keeping the hair out of your face when you're dancing, when you're partnering with a guy, you're not like whipping them with your hair. Like you don't have that thing distracting you while you're dancing. So here is all of my hair stuff. I have hair nets, but I only use these for performance. I never use hair nets during like just a rehearsal day. I don't need to be wearing like full stage makeup and costume for rehearsal. It just smooths out the bun so you don't have any like flyaways. Hair ties and pins, all just then bobby pins, just kind of in this little ball and you just shake it out and there you go. I usually just kind of grab about seven or eight pins and stick them in my head and pin my hair down where it needs to be pinned and then 
bobby pins for the flyaways and I've got some uh, shorter hair up here so like I'll take it and just pin it back and that's what keeps it smooth and out of my face. That's like a standard little ballet bun that I would just throw in and go for rehearsal. Moving on to deodorant. This company, Meow Meow Tweet, <laughs> um, they make a deodorant that's 100% no plastic and it's completely um, compostable, biodegradable. It has no baking soda in it. And I noticed that like a freshly shaved armpit, the skin gets irritated by baking soda. So this one doesn't irritate it. I shave my armpits every other day for dancing. When I'm not dancing, I'll let them do their thing. <laughs> When I have my arm up in like a really long line, if I have like this patch of hair right here, it like chops the line. So it makes the like elegantness and that movement of dancing like there's a big stagnant like dot in the middle of a line. So that's why I shave my armpits. Last but not least, uh, a little bit of breath spray. It's just a minty spray. It's good for pH balancing. In the middle of rehearsal, I'm grabbing a snack, a bite to eat, and they're like, oh, go partner with this guy. I'll just spray it in my mouth. It's just a kindness. I don't want to have to be like dancing with somebody like face to face and have them breathing on me and you know smelling that. Next is muscle recovery and muscle aids. I use Arnica gel and the CBD healing stick and I mix the two of these together and that's what I put on my muscles for the next day recovery. So this is like my let's wake up and not be a sore hopefully salve. <laughs> In my little baggie I've got my Tiger Balm. I love this stuff and it's just super helpful for like opening up the pores and doing that minty tingly stuff. That opens it up, helps the blood rush to that area, and so that speeds up recovery. I've got my toe spacers. So these are different than the ones I put in my point shoes. These ones are for spreading out your metatarsals, like they go weaved in between your foot. Because in my point shoes, my feet are constantly tightened up and like in the shoe on my lunch break. I'll throw these in my toes and I just sit there and it's like a little meditation of just like relaxing. A little hack, sometimes I'll stick them in the fridge when I get home. And then so I have them nice and cold on my feet and it just, it feels so good. Also having them cool at night helps like reduce with a little inflammation that you might get in between your toes. And it's like taking a nice little ice bath after the end of the day. I always have KT tape with me. KT tape stands for kinesiology therapeutic tape. It's a muscle tape and it basically adds as another layer of fascia that's like around your muscles and it just helps support them. So if you have a little injury or something where you just need like some extra support in a movement pattern, you can tape your muscles into that area and it gives you that extra added like support system. I injured my foot about two years ago. It was in my ankle. Coming back into dancing and also to help push me through those last couple of performances that I did do on my foot, I taped, I taped and I taped. I rip it in half. And you take these two sides and kind of butterfly them away from each other and put it right underneath the highest point of my arch, like with an upward motion. And so now I've got these two little flaps and I take the inside part and I tape going up. So it's lifting that part of my arch up. And then the other side, I do the same thing with a little bit less tension. And that just like lifts my arch up and just kind of holds it in that proper like lifted position. I'm not like tweaking my ankle back and forth, but it's just very like straightforward in the motion and it reminds it to like realign itself. Next is the best invention ever made, the tennis ball. It is so important that you roll out the bottom of your arches. And same thing with this toe spacers that spread your metatarsal. This just gets deeper into that like meaty part of your foot. And it feels so good on my arch just to roll out every day and it keeps your foot from being overly tight and getting fatigued and starting to like tweak in different areas. So this is my gua sha tool. It's a jade stone and it's basically meant to scrape the fascia around your body, which is the layer in between your skin and your muscles. By using this tool, it helps promote blood flow back to the heart and also getting oxygen to the muscles. For me, like at the end of the day, when I've been standing on my feet all day and I'm just kind of swollen or there's that like heaviness within my legs, if I just sit there and scrape in an upward motion and I'm talking like about a gentle scrape, I'm not like digging in there. It just feels so good and it's super helpful and I notice it the next day there's less of like a heaviness within my feet. Now going on to the stretching accessories. I talked about this guy a little bit in a previous video, but the flexi stretcher feels like almost like a purse. You can carry your leg in, go over to the opposite side of 
about the leg. One of the main reasons I love the flexi stretcher is I can have my legs up in those extreme stretch positions where like my leg is up super high in adagio, but it allows me to maintain the upper body and have my hands and arms free so I can continue doing this perfect and correct port bra for that leg position. All right, so next is my gaggle of TheraBands. It's like a clown bag. There's so many TheraBands in here, oh my goodness. It starts with uh, toughest to stretch, medium resistance, and easiest resistance. Um, all are used for different areas. Any dancer starts doing these exercises. They're so good for strengthening the ankle muscles. Oh my gosh, I can already feel the burn. It's crazy how like far up your leg it goes. If you go to a gym and you're wanting to make your biceps bigger, you grab a weight and you lift the weight and that resistance aids in the expansion and growth of that particular muscle you're working. So with these guys, I can still do my ballet positions, but adding the band adds a little bit of restriction so I can use my muscles more and push it further and especially those little fine-tuned muscles within the ankles and shoulders this is another good one too because adding that resistance when you get out of there whew, nice we do these things called toe push-ups and it's literally like i hook the theraband around a toe and i just go up and down with it they're really really good for um, strengthening the bottom of your foot and that is so helpful for taking off from a jump landing from a jump where you have more control and it's safer being up on point being able to hold the balance more like people think that dancers legs are really strong and they kind of forget that our feet are also just full of really strong muscles that aid to everything that we're doing Next in this Mary Poppins bag are two articles of clothing that I always have with me. I have a Rubia Wear wrap skirt. It's just a big square piece of this like beautifully knitted fabric, super soft. I'll wear tights and a leotard, sometimes shorts, pants, just for class and stuff. But when we go to rehearsal, a lot of the times the choreography and the costume requires a skirt. So it's super, super nice to have it's just something that you can wrap around your body and kind of get used to wearing in a sense. And it's super helpful for the choreographer too to see you kind of in something that mimics the costume. Next is my vest. This is it for kind of clothing that I keep in my bag. And when I'm not dancing, this goes on my body. I wanna really make sure that I keep my chest, stomach, and spine warm say we're doing we're running through a ballet swan like I'll give an example I don't dance the whole ballet I dance the first aristocratic part and then we have a little bit of a break and then we go into the swan act and so in between that when they're rehearsing the other dancers it's super super vital that I keep my muscles warm so when I am ready to go back into the studio and dance I'm not trying to rewarm myself up I'm just ready to go on the spot I always have my water bottle. I try to drink about two or three of these a day. I'm a very sweaty person. It's hot in the studios. We're working our butts off. You can't sweat and not drink water. So, I mean, you just can't not drink water. You gotta drink water throughout the day. And I sweat a lot, so I've gotta rehydrate and replenish myself. I like to have coconut water. I'm not a big fan of sports drinks. I think there's too much sugar in them and that spike and then that decline that happens from the sugar, it's not gonna be helpful for when you're dancing, you know, for six hours a day you gotta you gotta sustain it so the coconut water is just super good for electrolytes and hydration banana <laughs> full of potassium super super good for your muscles and it's a super filling snack too so if you're hungry middle of the day eat a banana last but definitely not least in my bag are miscellaneous slash random stuff so i always keep a notebook and pen with me we're constantly learning new choreography like it's never ending at abt and that's something we're known for is like constantly just like throwing new things out there like let's do it i've had this since i started dancing at abt it's not extremely full because a lot of it i memorized by myself but it's fun to like look through like this is when i learned harlots from romeo and juliet or he balance coupe passe stuff like that is not spelt right at all face tendu downstage left on diagonal they're just like it's kind of what I say to myself in my brain to remember a dance. That's what it is. A lot of it too is like little doodles and I'll have little like, I draw little squares, which is like the stage on uh, like a little mini stage. And I'm like, okay, my ex is right here. And then she runs around following this arrow and then she ends up right there. And then there's two people next to her and the other two people are circles. But we're constantly learning choreography. So it's really helpful to have it all kind of written down. It's like studying.
So that's a lot of things that go in my dance bag that I'm constantly carrying around. But when you think about it, if you were at an office job and you had your computer, your printer, your post-it notes, your pens, your extra pens, your pencils, your, your desk chair, like all of those things are basically what I keep in my dance bag, but for ballet. Bye guys, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.